Hey there, Swisher International. This is Dominic Caruba. I am here for Follow Up Friday, completion of your workshop without walls, your negotiation skills workshop, really having you raise the bar of effectiveness uh, as a, in, for this workshop. So we're going to do a couple recaps. Remember, everything, everything, everything that transpires in this course will reveal something about you as a person, as a leader, and in relationship if you'll only pay attention to it, which means are you paying attention the things that happen. Why do you do that? Well, because behavior is an ABC equation. There is uh, the behavior, the habit, the behavior that you're exhibiting, what you're demonstrating, it's always triggered, antecedent, right? It's always triggered and it's left, it leaves you with a consequence or a reward. So what uh, uh, Duig talks about is that when it comes to habits, if you look at the triggers, those are the antecedents, then the behavior, and then the reward. We call them brain candy, right? So your bad habits, and you have them, can be stopped if you avoid the triggers. You're not gonna change the behavior once it's triggered. So are you paying attention to everything, everything, everything? Because in doing that, when you do behavior that's not wanted, or not useful or productive, you need to back up a little bit and reflect so that you notice what the trigger was so you can avoid the triggers. A little bit about behaviors, a little bit about habits, because it matters. So the pathway to get maximum value out of this program is again, to discover, learn, and teach. So as you're learning this material, who are you teaching it to? Who are you reflecting with? Hopefully your triad, you're working with them, making sure that you're keeping your agreements, your daily commitments, because that should make you uncomfortable. And then you can experiment with what's working and what's not. But you can't do it if you don't have a single agreement that you're keeping over a long period of time. So make sure that you do that. And remember, in order to really get maximum value, you're gonna have to ask yourself as well as others better questions. Because whatever the reasons are that you think you're doing or not doing what you're supposed to be doing or wanna do or need to do, you know the things you need to do, you don't have the answer. It's in a realm of what you don't know you don't know, right? It's in that realm of you, because if you had the answer, you'd be doing the new behavior. And that takes inquiry, which means asking a better question. We talked about how do I versus why questions. Looking for resourceful questions, not reasons why you don't have the results you want. Look, you're either getting the results you want in life or you're not. So if you're not getting the results you want in life, pay attention, ask a better question. What could I do that I'm not doing now? What could I pay attention to? So just remember that. It's kind of a base, right? And we're really talking about in this process, the building of rapport, connecting with others where they are and moving them to where you want them to be in rapport, in relationship, right? right. So with the right approach, asking questions that uncover their pain, their pleasure, and their outcomes so that you have a really clear understanding understanding of what they want and what you have and how to communicate what you have in the way that they want it. So remember the steps of building rapport, right? It starts with self-awareness, uh, leads to self-control, uh, and, then it, and then it's paying attention to your customer and making decisions about how they are and what they need. So you can provide that and adapt your message so that you're actually giving them what they need before you're getting what you need. That's an act of generosity. That's an act of courage. That's a that's a that's a gift that you're giving people. And one of the laws of uh, res, uh, influence is reciprocity. Give people your rapport. Be in relationship with them in a way that makes that connection harmoniously. In, in a way that's to get what you want and what you need. So we're going through my rapport model, which is the taking the master tools of influence and broken it down into an acronym that makes sense. Remember your relationship. Who is the customer to you? Are they a pain in the ass or are they a joy to be with? Who are you to them? Are you just bugging them or you know, are you really adding value? And are you committed to be something more than just, well, I'm taking their order or I'm trying to get my job done? You know, are you clear about who you are and who they are um, to you? Because if you don't, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna get there. So let me move my mouse pad, right? Uh, my little picture pad. And then your approach, right? Are you paying attention? Are you communicating in a way that matches their needs? Are you bringing to them based on their style? You know, you're observing the way they speak and the community move and act 
so that you get a better idea of what they need in the communication, right? Are they, or are they controlled? Or are they emotive? Are they direct or indirect? Do they ask questions to assert their opinion? Or do they make statements? And are you, here's the most important thing, are you adjusting to meet their needs? And then you start asking them questions about what they like about the current situation. And in using their words, paying attention to their words, also uncovering the pains, things they want to avoid. Remember, people will do more to avoid pain than they will to seek pleasure. So you're uncovering those things. You're asking those questions that bring out and get them associated. Have them feeling the feelings of, of preference, feeling the feelings of pain, feeling and getting clarity on their outcome. What it looks like, feels like, sounds like for them. I got to fix that. Yeah, come slow. Now we're going to talk about relevance, recommunicating back to them, putting it back to them, presenting what you have that fits their outcome and using their words, their motivating language. Okay, let's talk about that. So we talked about relationship. Who are you to the customer? Who are they to you? Uh, the approach. I don't know where my A went, but uh, how do they communicate? Are they express or control, the direct or indirect, which leaves you in a two, four quadrant model. But even if you're half wrong, you're still half right. Even if you only know part of it really well, you'll still get half of it right most of the time. You're moving in the direction of rapport so that a driver gets their results. An expressive it gets their ideas done. An analytical uh, gets their data appreciated. And a, a, a amiable knows that uh, their focus on people is, is, is safe with you. And the tips, just a quick tip on how you identify a customer's style or personality is listen. Pay attention and listen to how your customer interacts with you. Do they engage in small talk? Are they straight to the point? Are they direct or indirect? Do they ask or tell? Do they want facts, data, or do they general concepts, control or remote? Just listen. And then the needs assessment portion of your interaction with somebody before you can get them to buy into your ideas, is you got to uncover their pains, their, pre their preferences, and, and, and what they want. You know? Insights as to what behavior the customer associates with pleasure. What do they like from you? What do they like from their competitors? How do they buy? You know, what's great about carrying tobacco in your store? What, what would you like? What, what, do you, what do you think is going well? Describe what you like about the current contract. What do you like about? Is the question. Then there's pain, right? What do they want to avoid? Um, right? What do they need to avoid? Describe what you would change. What really annoys you about? What frustrates you the most about? And then open up the dialogue. And then you start to get to the outcome. Well, what if you could have it your, all your way? You know, and, get, and clarify and uncover those deeper meanings. And, and the way to do that is through listening. Remember, the key to listening is to not talk. Shut up. Stop talking. Hear them out. Understand the words they're saying. And then pause to process it and uncover the meaning. Ask a question about their answer, a meaning question. What do you mean by that? How important is that to you? What's important about that? Tell me, describe that. And then let me, let me paraphrase that back to you. Before you get onto your agenda, that's a gift. That's generous listening. You're taking it in, committed to understand it, before you deliver it and deliver it back to them the way you get feedback. So you make sure that you're in rapport before you move forward because you're not moving forward for real. If you did all that other stuff and you didn't really listen to them, you're not moving forward by getting said what you want to say. You're only surviving the relationship. And that's not going to work. So now we're going to talk about rel relevance. It's the positioning of your options to their needs and wants makes you relevant. Positioning your options to their needs and wants is what makes you relevant. You know, knowing to take what, what, what you have that works for them and presenting that and removing what doesn't work, trying to remove it as much as mitigate it. And when you do that, you, you, you start to communicate in a relevant way that you're matching their need, their, their desires with your product, service, contract idea. So you have, you know, the other piece of this is to be relevant. You have to, you know, take responsibility that you're, that it matters. Take responsibility that you, you know, that you either care or don't care. 
but that if you're going to produce extraordinary outcomes, you have to really take responsibility to understand your market, understand your customer, understand your product, understand your company, your competition. Um, when you do those things, it's easier for you to make an offer that's relevant, right? And more than that, to present it with their language, the, the things they said in the pain, pleasure, and outcome questions, using their words. Because if you don't use their words, it doesn't actually resonate with them. If you use your words, it says a lot about you. Everything, everything, everything says something about you if you're willing to pay attention. So this is where you start to present options and offers and really and use that shut up model and paraphrase back to them and make sure you get done what you need done so that you get your understanding of what they're telling you across to them. You're demonstrating that you care because people don't want don't care how much you know. They, they, they want to know how much you care. So are you putting enough effort into your conversations with them to make it worthwhile for you and them? Are you honoring your time and theirs? Are you holding up your position in a way that honors your position in the marketplace? You know, or is it something else? So asking open-ended questions will handle the objections in advance. Well, what do you like about what, you know, what, what if we could, how would you know, where are you now? Relevance questions. So remember your daily discipline. And your daily discipline determines your destiny. And if you focus on what's most important in your life, in your work, for yourself, you'll realize that it's only going to happen as a function of your commitment. Are you committed to this? Are you committed to be a great negotiator? If you are, then you're doing the work. If you're not, it's revealed in how you're doing the work or not. Because with every commitment involves some sacrifice. You have to give up something for the sake of something else with a more pressing need. And if, and if, and if being a more effective negotiator is not important to you, then none of this is important. And are you doing something that helps you hone the skills and develop the mentality and develop the, uh, the approach that you need to be more effective as a negotiator? And are you doing it inside uh, accountability commitments? Are you keeping your word to your partner? Are you doing the things you said you were going to do and or does someone else know about it? Or are you hiding behind, you know, your own excuses? Just remember that, okay? So take those pain, pleasure, and outcome questions and mark down the words that they use so that when you present your solutions or your offer or you, what you're going to, you know, use to make an agreement with it, your customer, that it's relevant, that it matches their needs, wants, and desires so that they can hear it with their words. If they hear it with their words, they'll believe it. So maintain your daily discipline, produce those results. Call me if you have any questions. This is Dominic. I'm out. Have a great day. See you next Friday.